Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I got your weather update for today. Matter of fact, we're still getting some winds on this storm over here for the UP of Michigan. Still over 40 miles per hour wind gusts. We're getting a lot of snow for the higher elevations in Colorado, over nine inches. Also in Montana, getting eight inches of snowfall. Now, our severe weather is changing for today. And it did update just like I told you in yesterday's video. When I told you these tornadoes are going to move a little bit further to the east. And you can see they have. Let me turn this off for a second so you can see. The tornado chances have moved further to these. Now, it's eastern Ohio going into western Pennsylvania. And that always shows true when you do long range forecasts. I've been doing it for years and the long range is always moving further with the jet stream. This is your chance for tornadoes for today. Now it is going to change. I know you are in your severe weather risk for this area, but this is going to be for chances for hail and chances for winds in this area. Then as you go through for tomorrow, it's going to change again. Now your tornado chances for tomorrow is going to be for Southern Illinois, Southeastern Missouri, and Western Kentucky. In this region, as we get this cold front, we got some storms that's going to be bursting up. Now yesterday, they're saying 17, so it's showing on here 18 tornado reports that we did have yesterday in the area. Plus we had wind damage reports. We had wind damage up to 81 reports. We had 120 rain reports and over 60 snow reports, but it was a strong, powerful storm, but I am very proud to say there was no injuries in last night's uh, storm. So thank God to all the live streamers that did help everybody last night. Thank you for helping everyone because everyone is safe. There is destruction but no one's hurt. Now for today, we do have these storms that's gonna pop up later in the afternoon, Eastern Ohio, maybe even go a little bit further into Western Pennsylvania. And then you see for tomorrow, we do have that severe weather risk coming in as we start getting this trough, as we get this cold front coming through. And this is bringing more severe weather towards Missouri and Southern Illinois as well. And overnight into the early morning hours as it transfers over towards the Southeast. While it brings all this cool air on down, that big trough we have is allowing all this cold air to come in but this also is going into a very high ridge and is going to go on a big warm up right after and you can see this here when you look at your latest update on your a or your arctic oscillation we do have that cooler air coming on in and it is going to linger around for a little bit and maybe even come back again as we deal with may this is not a possibility this is where it's showing if you look at the previous run it didn't even really show that this is the latest run and this is your average right here in the green more than likely what is going to happen so far but there's a possibility for layers so we should keep our eyes open on that this right here is your epo your east pacific oscillation your jet stream on the west coast as you get that low trough looking just like this on this shot right here you get that high ridge going across the center to the east side of the u.s that's why you get on that warm-up but this is going to allow that cold air to come in and later on it's going to go on a higher ridge on the west coast and it's going to warm right back up. Now, this is starting today, and it is going to bring some nasty wind chills with it as well. It's not just the temperatures you need to watch out for, but it's going to be for today, and it's going to go deeper for tomorrow, bringing colder air as you go towards Friday. There it goes a little bit further. Now, for the south, it's going to be for Sunday. Here you are for Saturday. You still got the freezing temperatures coming across with a lot of this very cold wind chills, but now it's going further into the U.S. by Saturday, and on Sunday, it's going to be there as well. Go a little bit further down into the U.S., bringing colder wind chills. And as you go towards Monday, it's going to start moving a little bit further over towards the northeast, still cooler wind chills, and start moving out after that. Then we're going to be on that high ridge. The high ridge is going to allow all these very warm temperatures come on in on the west coast after that. So it is going to warm right back up. So for today, you do have chances for hail, even significant hail right here in this black portion for Kansas right here on the eastern side. Now, all that black is significant, at least two inches in diameter. Plus, you have your 5% in your two areas of 15%. Here's your cities and states at risk for the hail threat for today. Also, the wind threat. The wind threat is going to be over here towards the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. Here's your cities and states at risk. It will be weaker as it goes further south down the tail of that storm. Now, your tornado threat, as I showed you before, has moved further towards the east. You have your 2%. I think that 2% will shrink up greatly and stay towards Ohio, towards western Pennsylvania, maybe a little bit of West Virginia. So here's your cities and states at risk for your tornado threat for today.
National Weather Service has scattered thunderstorms capable of wind damage. Isolated large hail and a tornado threat are expected to develop across parts of the Ohio Valley and the lower Great Lakes this afternoon. Storms with large hail are expected tonight in parts of the Central Plains and Ozarks. Now you can see here as you go towards 4 and 5 o'clock, you start to get some cells pulling through for eastern Ohio. And this is where you start to have your best significant tornado perimeters where you have a lot of wind shear, a lot of dew points, a lot of lift in the atmosphere going all the way to six and seven o'clock right here along eastern Ohio. Now, if you take a look, you'll see that you still have your perimeters, but now it's starting to move towards the evening. Now it's moving towards eight and nine o'clock going into western Pennsylvania. And with your perimeters, they're a little bit weaker now, but still a slight chance as that pushes off and then it becomes no chance. And you just have regular storms pushing through but until then it's eastern ohio going a little bit into western pennsylvania and then you have for tomorrow these storms start brewing up for tomorrow but it's really going to move into the evening for southern missouri going into southern illinois and you can see the significant tornado perimeters are not super strong just right along that front line as these cells starts pushing through mostly for missouri as you go through the evening that's bringing your best chances for a tornado right on that line looking a lot weaker than what we have for today but still you have your best chances looking like it will consolidate a little more towards missouri and then you got some more thunderstorms as brewing up all the way from texas to arkansas even going into kentucky as you go through thursday evening still showing there'd be a lot of chances for large hail with that as well and you can see this here. You get your lightning strikes moving through Ohio for today, all the way to 3 p.m., all the way to 6 p.m. You see how it goes all the way towards eastern Ohio with those cells, western Pennsylvania, and then it just dies off with those storms. The severity loses. You lose your dew points. But once you come in for tomorrow, look how it comes in with some chances for large hail all the way for tomorrow morning. As it travels down Missouri, I still think that's your best chance for your tornadoes so far. Not as strong as today, but it is your best chance. Why you get a lot of chances for hail? This is for Oklahoma. This is for Texas, this is a chance for large hail. All these lightning strikes, all the white ones, that's a lot of lightning strikes in the atmosphere. A growing storm, chances for large hail for tomorrow afternoon as that pushes across. Showing so far your chances for hail a little bit through Michigan, some for eastern Ohio going to western Pennsylvania. Then as you go overnight in early morning hours, you're getting chances for hail for eastern and southern Missouri, southern Illinois, southern Indiana, and a little bit for eastern Oklahoma and Texas also. Showing the best portion that I think will be the hail and a chance for tornadoes for tomorrow will be right here for Missouri. So for Thursday, your chance for hail is in this area. You have the brown and the 5% and the two areas of 15%. Here's your cities and states at risk. Plus, you also have the wind threat almost in the same area, just a little bit bigger over here for the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley. Here's your cities and states at risk for the damage and winds for Thursday. Now, your tornado threat will stay consolidated, just like I showed you in the beginning. Here's your 2% and your 5% and your cities at risk. National Weather Service has scattered strong to severe storms capable of damage and winds, large hail, and perhaps a couple tornadoes will be possible Thursday from parts of eastern Missouri into the lower Ohio Valley and vicinity. Locally, damage and winds and hail are also expected over parts of northern Texas. And then as it stretches into Friday, you do have your 5%, your chances for severe weather. Here's your cities and states at risk. Showing some places where it will be some chances for some damage and winds, like for Texas, maybe some more coming through northern Missouri, all through southern Illinois, southern Indiana, and western Ohio, a little bit of northern Kentucky. Now, a lot of these winds have pushed through already up here towards the northern side. This is not more to come. But you can see you're getting a 40 miles per hour wind gust and a little bit of isolated 50 here and there as that pushes through all through the evening. Then we're going to have our next storm system push through. I will show you down here because it also affects for the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley as it goes through for tomorrow. This is where it's bringing periodic shots of 50 miles per hour wind gusts with these storm cells as they push further towards the southern side, southern Illinois as well. And after 5 p.m., you still have more coming across, mostly for southern Illinois going into southern Indiana and northern Kentucky. That's showing 50 and up to 60. Plus, what's coming across the south central, you're going to have two areas. You're going to have over here for southern Texas, right here along the Gulf Coast, 
50, 60 miles per hour wind gust possibility coming with that. Plus, you have some storms moving through with some wind damage possibility for Nebraska, Kansas, going through Oklahoma and a panhandle of Texas. And then watch when you go through the evening, that keeps pushing through. Strong storm cells moving through Texas, showing 50, 60, even up to 70 or more. The winds really show a lot stronger down here for the Texas area for tomorrow than anywhere else. So here's the temperatures you can expect starting for tomorrow for Thursday. You're going to the freezing temperatures of 20s moving in from the northwest. Even some very cold temperatures, higher elevations of Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. Getting maybe some negative temperatures moving through. Now remember, this is going to be a cold wind chill factor on this cold front coming in the same area, but reaching a little bit more towards the north central now and bringing some very cold wind chills down to negative 15 or more. Now, as you go towards Friday, it's going to move a little bit further towards the east with the freezing temperatures. Now it's going to start bringing the 40s a little bit further towards the south. And with the wind chills, it is going to be cold once again, all the way to north central, bringing in some tingle digits or some teen temperatures coming through. This is wind chills. But now your wind chills are moving further now into Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan, all the way to Iowa on Friday. As you go through Saturday, it's going to be about the same thing as Friday. Sunday is when it's going to move through towards the south. Still got the freezing temperatures. You still got the 40s, but now they're going further towards the east. And your wind chills for Saturday is going to be one of your coldest days, Saturday and Sunday. Bringing colder wind chills towards Michigan now and a little bit further towards the inner coastal northeast and bringing 40s all the way across. Now, once you go to Sunday, here's your freezing temperatures moving in for the northern side for the lower 48 once again. But now you got your 40s starting to pull down towards the southern side of the U.S. And this is your temperatures. Now, your wind chills is going to be cold on Sunday all the way towards the inner coastal northeast. Feeling like you're in freezing temperatures, maybe even some 20s going on for y'all. And you're still going to feel like you're in the 40s all the way for the south central. The southeast is still going to be okay, but you're going to feel like you're in the 50s and 60s and 70s right along the Gulf Coast. Now, Monday is going to be there again. It's still going to bring down these 40s towards the south, so it's not going to be frozen. But now you got the freezing temperatures moving towards the intercoastal northeast, mostly towards your higher elevations, and everyone else is starting to mile down. Now, your wind chills are still going to be there, but it's not going to be as strong as it's been. But it is going to bring the 40s down towards the southern side once again. And you're going to feel like you're in the 20s now for the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes and the intercoastal northeast. This is your turn for the cold spill. After this, it's going to start pulling away. We're going to go on that high ridge and start warming up. Thank you for your time, everybody. I hope this has helped you understand what is coming around the corner. So there still is some more storms to come as we get this cold front. Then after this, we're going to go on a big warm up. So I appreciate every single one of y'all. Hope you have a very blessed day today. Hope everyone is safe from the storms from yesterday. Now, before you go, First Peter chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has seized from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. I know y'all have been noticing there's been a lot of things going on with YouTube lately. A lot of streamers have been having problems as well. The views look weird. You can't hit the like button. You can't subscribe. There's a lot of weird things going on lately. So I appreciate everyone that does try and help get the word out. I know it's very hard and probably even harder now than it used to be. But I do appreciate every single one of y'all. Hope you have a very blessed day. I'll see you again for tomorrow morning. Now remember, all glory always goes to God. Our Father in heaven. Yahweh, and I always hope he keeps you safe, keeps you from harm, you, your family, everyone you know, and keeps peace in your home. That's the main thing is to have peace in your heart and peace in your home. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. If anything, I strive for peace. Amen.